Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is the Questionable Garage. And this gem right here is our 1970 Plymouth Duster that I am building for the Holly Triple Crown, the thing I made up because I want to be special. But um, this is the car we should be working on. I'm running out of time, but I'm waiting for some parts and I didn't feel like painting. So I called up a friend and told him to bring his car in that was needing some brakes along with some other parts and upgrades because I wanted to work on something a little bit different and I figured you guys would really appreciate this as well. So right here, well the nose of it, some of you might recognize it, is a 2014 Nissan GTR, a proper supercar. So often you got YouTubers calling just about anything a supercar, no one's gonna argue the R35 GTR is a supercar. And just like the title suggested, we're gonna put some Corvette parts on it to try to make it even better. But uh, you really can't hardly see the car, so let me reset the angle a little bit. Actually, I lied. Dwayne, do your magic. Let's give it a little beauty montage, and then we're gonna show you those Corvette parts we're gonna put on it. Well, welcome to the table of parts where we're gonna show you what we're doing to the GTR today. Well, some of it, we've got some of the parts that, uh, well, we're just gonna put on and talk about while we're doing it. The main thing that this GTR needed was new brakes. If you look, these front rotors and rear rotors are extremely worn. You see very heavy ridging. The GTR comes with some pretty phenomenal brakes from the factory. They have a Brembo, here we go. Six piston front caliper. That is absolutely massive. Most sports cars upgrade to a caliper of this size and are incredibly happy. In the rear, we have a Brembo four piston. Again, absolutely massive. This is bigger than most sports cars front brake caliper. One of the big reasons for it is the GTR, the R35 is kind of a big girl which kind of goes against the whole history of the car. The Skyline has always been a lightweight, as light, well, lightweight, as light as you can make an all-wheel drive car. Then the total redesign came with the twin turbo V6 and dual clutch rear mounted transaxle, and they got very heavy. So you need a lot of brake to get this thing slowed down. But that's where the secret comes in. Because it uses these Brembo, which is a very similar Brembo that most every manufacturer uses. They tweak them ever so slightly for each application, but at its core, they use a very similar pad, sometimes the exact same pad as a lot of other vehicles. That reduces production cost and allows, you know, pretty much racing brakes to end up on street cars. So you may be asking yourself, what is that teaser? Why did you say we're putting Corvette brakes on a GTR? That's because we are, but not just any Corvette brake. Let me uh, reposition a couple things here. I'll be right back. In case you're wondering, a front GTR brake rotor comes in right about 25 pounds. Oh. If you're also wondering, the rear GTR brake rotor comes in about 27 pounds. Ugh. Those are hefty. All right, we interrupt your regularly scheduled, well, no, actually GTR is not very regularly scheduled, but we interrupt your GTR brake job to bring you something a lot more practical to your wallets and to mine. And that is thanks to our partner, O'Reilly Auto Parts today, where they are excited to release the Brake Best Select Pro brake line for domestic vehicles. So uh, our GTR has turned into a 2009 F-150 with uh, very broken brakes. Now I know you're used to seeing Pira and Magni do uh, all of the Riley stuff for me. They got word of the new brakes and they're already on the road telling everyone about them, just like Tommy and Richard did.
You're driving along, you're driving along, and all of a sudden the kids are yelling from the back seat, I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy! Not now! What I was trying to say is that uh, our new brake pads are really cool. So while they are out there on the road, let me tell you a little bit about them here in the shop. They have gone and knocked it out of the park. They weren't just satisfied with brake best. They wanted to make everything even better and match OE equivalent or sometimes even better than you get on your vehicle brand new. In their brake pad kits, they come with brand new hardware, something that's often forgotten about or really cheap hardware is provided. This is PTF coated. It is going to last and do amazing. And all the brake pads come with anti-squeal shims and noise reduction shims already attached no breaking off and prying off the old shims, no running without them to help keep them quiet on the caliper. Also, something we talk about in the GTR brake is brake bedding. It is incredibly important with new brakes to make sure you bed them in properly. And these come with a coating to help accelerate that brake bedding process, get the right amount of pad material embedded into the brake rotor. So that way they can do their job, minimize any pulsation and vibrations that you would get from it and maximize life of the brake product. Now, when it comes to the brake rotors, they are probably the best rotor I have ever pulled out of a box. Just, that's my anecdotal opinion. I have pulled a lot of brakes out. There's no oils to clean off of them. They are just coated, ready to go. That coating is gonna help protect them against rust, which actually was the downfall of these brake rotors that helped lead them to cracking was they started rusting. Good quality coatings are gonna keep that from happening and it makes it look great behind open spoke wheels. Also, for a very limited time, if you go ahead and order your brakes, if you use code BRAKE15, you're gonna save 15% off your brake setup that you're getting for your car. Again, thank you to O'Reilly Auto Parts for partnering with us in this episode. Head on over, O'ReillyAuto.com, BRAKE15, save 15% off your brake setup that you're getting for your car. So, what are we doing? That's right. Carbon ceramic. This is a front rotor off of a C6 Corvette ZR1. They are relatively affordable in a carbon ceramic way. I say relatively affordable that if you're careful in shopping, you can get a front pair for about $2,500. These are not cheap. You have to be careful with them. But in the realm of extreme high-end braking, they are very cheap. Carbon ceramic is a fantastic brake rotor material. It handles heat very, very well. Its biggest benefit is how light it is. 25 pounds for the factory steel rotor. This comes in at under 13 and a half pounds. It is extremely, extremely light but these don't just bolt onto a car. You need something like this, uh, this adapter hat. This will replace the center hat. That's gonna give us the correct brake offset, inner board diameter, and wheel offset. That's gonna let us get this front rotor mounted on the GTR. This particular hat was made by uh, Speed by Design, but if we're doing carbon ceramics up front, why wouldn't we go ahead and do them in the rear as well? And that's introducing this gem, our rear carbon ceramic brake rotor. Again, these come in anywhere from between $2,000 to $2,500 a pair. Not a cheap thing at all, but when you compare a off-the-shelf racing carbon ceramic brake kit, they range... Um, well, they're nearly $40,000. Now you do have some options where you can get an axle for the Nismo for like $17,000. That's a stupid number, $17,000. They're phenomenal brakes, do not get me wrong, but I feel like, you know, doing these uh, carbon ceramic from the Corvette is definitely good price savings. Um, you do need to get, hey, custom rear hats. This is an all aluminum unit made by uh, Boost Logic. One downside, downside is it being all aluminum, it also behaves as the parking brake bell, um, whereas the ZR1 is steel. If you try to drive 
with your parking brake on because you forgot to drop it, you're likely going to damage this more than you would a steel drum. But this comes in at 16 pounds with a good chunk of that weight being the uh, steel center drum versus the aluminum one. So just off the bat, Rear total, 22 pounds. Front, we're saving 18 pounds. So that's a tremendous amount of rotational weight removed. And we're adding in a lot of uh, just sheer braking power. Plus, they look really cool. And the astute among you will notice uh, we've already got them on this side. And that's because I had to test fit a couple things. Now to get the calipers to fit, you do have to have them machined in clearance. Some people will just use a cutting wheel or Dremel by hand, and you can do that. And this is the questionable garage, and I could just go at it with a cutting wheel, but there's certain things that I am kind of a stickler for, and paying a machine shop to go ahead and mount up these calipers and properly machine them you end up with a beautiful result like this. And that just guarantees you have the clearance to you know, fit these rotors. They are a little bit thicker. Um, you do have to run a special pad for the carbon ceramics and you do need to take a lot of care when working around them. They are very, very strong, but you can hit them and chip them in just the right way and absolutely destroy the rotors. So it's one of those weird things where they're incredibly strong, but also incredibly fragile kind of feels like me. I'm incredibly strong and awfully fragile. But anyway, we need to go ahead and get these rotor hats swapped off. So let's do that. I'll walk you through that process. We'll get them torqued on. But once we're done with that, Dwayne can uh, put the footage in of us cutting and clearancing the backing plates to allow these rotors to fit in. And then once all the brakes are on, we we did some engine goodies too. I've, I've actually already done them while I was waiting for the calipers to come back. Yeah, we're, we're doing some small upgrades to prepare it for future upgrades. So to me, first step, really anytime before you do heavy handling of a carbon ceramic is get gloved up. Each one's a little different, but this one, the backing stud that you need to hold, normally I'd say, you know, star pattern's not a bad thing, but it is designed to have a slight amount of movement between every pad. I have fairly consistently torqued and un untorked these things in a circle and I have never had a problem. Now I will tell you, the, the brake people will tell you star patterns and everything. So do a star pattern. So we've already proven we don't listen to what we're told. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. I was trying to be slick. It failed. So lift out the Corvette, pull all the stands out, drop at least one of them on the ground, take your anti-rattle and wear clips out. Main thing is just don't force things. As weird as it is, they seem like they should be the strongest things ever and they are incredibly strong for brake pads biting into them. But if you hit them in just the right way, they fall apart. That's down. What's some of your favorite wrenching music? When you're in a shop, you don't gotta worry about copyright strikes. What is it you got playing? If you haven't heard that Between the Aisles podcast, it's over on the O'Reilly Auto Parts channel. I had a whole lot of fun just kind of hanging out, chatting for a couple hours. All right, let's get them all snugged up and then Torque Wrench comes out. Torque Wrench! Torque specs are kind of tricky to find, but a very common range is eight to 10 foot pounds. So we're torquing these right in the middle. And again, star pattern, circular, just 
make sure you get them all. You don't want one of these untorqued. Then you can put it on the car. Notice I already got the wheel locks off. Wheel lock nuts are not designed to uh, be hit with an impact. You just break them loose by hand. Then you can go to town with the rest of your nuts. We used up every ounce of this brake. That's impressive. process on the other side. It's remarkable. The, the opposite side, it's done the same way. a lot of people might not know with rotors that are drilled from the factory cracks aren't necessarily a problem the rear doesn't have it the front had some we'll talk about that potentially a little later where seeing the small cracks a normal thing it doesn't mean it's bad minimum thickness which this is well beyond is something to consider and then if the crack reaches the outside and goes all the way through then it's bad. But just small cracks in between, you don't got to worry about. Now, before we can actually put the rotors on the car, we have to clearance the backing plate. Now, normally the backing plate serves to direct airflow or protect the rotor from road debris. But unfortunately, sometimes when we are doing crazy things like putting Corvette rotors on a Nissan, you run into some problems where it doesn't quite fit. So here in the front, we actually have to cut the entire rotor backing plate away. The reasoning for that is where it would come out actually interferes with the hardware on the back side of the rotor. And while you could hammer and dent it away, you run the risk of it rebounding at some point, and if it ever does that, it can damage a very expensive rotor. So it's easier to remove it. Now, one thing you may be tempted to do, at least on this car, is unbolt the bearing and remove it completely, but technically, that thickness of the backing plate is a spacer. So if you eliminate that, you're gonna change your CV axle preload and a couple things there. Now, in the rear, there is normally a big lip right here. We just take our cutting wheel and like in that video, we cut it completely flush and that gives us the clearance for the rotor to go on. And once it can do that, we're able to leave most of the backing plate in place. Once you're done cutting, make sure you put a little bit of paint on it so it doesn't rust. And then we'll be able to have Corvette brakes on a GTR.
Well, guys, it is the next day from when we were just putting those rotors together, and I was under a little bit of a time crunch. I had some friends coming by to help bleed the brakes, and when you're working hurried and with carbon ceramics, having a camera in the way would kind of mess things up. Now it is time for us to get the wheels on and get this car lowered down because we're doing a couple other little upgrades in the engine bay to get it ready for some future stuff. But, I mean, look at that. You know, the question is, will Corvette brakes make a Nissan GTR better? And I think, it, uh, yes. You know, it's hard to argue against carbon ceramics aside from having to pay for them that hurts that that's that's a bit of a pill to swallow um if you're driving a gtr maybe not as bad if 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 this is one of your fast cars you know it, economies of scale um and it's an economy outside of my scale but we come around again all in we've got the new brake lines installed so you see that nice shiny brake line swinging around coming to the distribution block. So I'm really excited. We're gonna get wheels on it, get some engine based stuff. Then we're gonna go for just a quick drive, make sure it's good, because it's, it's a GTR. They're fun and not something we normally have here in the shop. We ended up back with the original coolant expansion tank. It happens so often, you know, aftermarket parts, they don't always like to work with each other. So this was an AMS uh, air oil separator aftermarket. I think just eBay brand coolant expansion tank, which was rubbing the hood. So he wanted to change it. There just wasn't enough real estate for the other one. Blow off valves, simple, make fun noises. Back here in the fueling, we now have a flex fuel sensor, which is going to measure the ethanol content in the fuel. And down there, you can't really see it with light, is a fuel pressure sensor. So these are some foundational mods to get ready so we can run ethanol. We'll get bigger injectors, bigger fuel pumps down the road. If you guys like seeing the GTR around, I may invite him back for those upgrades too. But those are going to let him kind of set up. He likes doing some of the things. He's comfortable with some wiring but not so much on the fuel system side of stuff. But in the current climate of EPA, 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 EPA! We kind of have to work around what we can. And with the tuning companies, Cobb, Ecutech, some of the others that work on reflashing the factory computers, they've been working on getting certified tunes, but also the way we used to have to run the flex fuel sensors, we're stealing and kind of hijacking other sensor wires, so things that would go to potentially an emissions control. Now their current setups and really actually kind of a cool thing that they've done and it's driven some innovation because it lets us run even more sensors is it all runs over the CAN protocol. They are a separate box, separate module that just sends information down the factory line. So all of the emissions that they want to have in place still exist and we're able to actually set up and run ethanol which tends to produce better tailpipe emissions. So we're able to do a lot of really cool stuff and, you know, keeps Big Brother happy. But we are now at the point that work is done. I just need to torque these wheels and we're going to go for a drive. So uh, less dilly daddle, more torquey torquey, and then we're going to go and drive it. Why is it every time we're in one of these Japanese cars, I feel like I'm just shoved in there? Oh yeah, because I'm, I'm a large person and these cars don't fit me very well. 
Something that else that has always amazed me is people's need to tailgate the heck out of you if you're in a nice car. It's not gonna make me go like racing. I'm already traveling at a reasonable speed. Wait until a passing zone, go around. No one, no one's impressed that you can tailgate. But first impressions, uh, got a, just a couple miles so far. Again, we're not beating on these brakes. I need to get fully bedded in. And that's something I'm gonna let the owner do himself because generally the process requires very high speed, rapidly stopping, immediately back to that high speed, rapidly stopping multiple times because the bedding in process, you're actually heating up the brake pad and embedding some brake material into the brake rotor. And your primary point of friction when you're stopping, especially with steel brakes, is the brake material against the brake material not necessarily the brake grinding against the steel. Now, carbon ceramics are quite a bit different. You're not embedding the brake pad into the carbon ceramic. You're conditioning the brake pad when you're bedding in a carbon ceramic set of brakes. Slightly different process. Still needs to be done to make sure they work as great as possible. I've been working on GTRs since they came to the United States. The company I used to work for, we had the, uh, second one in Atlanta and according to independent you know GTR reporting sites I was the first person in the entire world to ever take one of these transmissions apart um, that was not an employee of Nissan so the dual cutch transmission it's awesome it, it's the early ones had some weak points you know everyone thinks you know a GTR transmission they're they're glass cannons no good and that's not quite the case. You know, they're fairly robust. The R35 GTR, it's an amazing car. It's tons of technology to make the big burly car do all the things that it does. Which to me takes a little bit of like the driving experience away. They make lots of noise and drama and they can be turned into absolute monsters. The problem with them is it's very much a platformy car um, in that your modifications have different platforms and tiers. You can get to the 800 horsepower mark, easy-ish, but your next step from 800 up, you're now into the transmission, you're into the engine. So, you know, for three or four grand, you have this really amazing street car, but because there's so many other people with the thousand plus horsepower cars, you're now in the neighborhood of 15, 20, $30,000 to make that next step up. And it's just, it's a lot to swallow. All right, we're in the rural road. So let's see how well do Corvette brakes actually work on a GTR. And <laughs> right now, not very good because they're cold. Remember, carbon ceramic brakes need heat. It's wanting a lot of heat. All right, no one behind us. And, oh, there they are. <laughs> All right, I know they'll have more, but, but G, that G-force change where you just have that quick pit of the stomach feeling where it's just like, ooh, oh. Now they're coming up, so. <laughs> we'll give it one more. And now we get the fun little blow off valve sound. He's going to be happy. And. Oh! Yeah. It's not just a braking dynamic improvement when you do these carbon ceramic brakes, it is everything about the car whoo there we go is getting better we're now getting to the point that the abs just kicked in when i stood on the brake so whenever you can get these big heavy girls and get weight out of the right oh wow 
That's the fun button. Normally the accelerator is the fun button, but you can only go so fast uh, on city streets and country roads. So when you can have brakes that just throw you forward and give you those same acceleration Gs just the wrong way, that's a lot of fun. But anytime you get weighed out, it makes a car so much better. So the question, oh, wow, okay. Do Corvette brakes make a Nissan GTR better? And absolutely, the ZR1 carbon ceramic brakes make the car phenomenal by removing weight. It's something that Nissan finally started offering as a factory option. When you can get all that weight off, it just, it, everything is better across the board. I will say they are expensive. I would love to put them you know, on a duster, maybe, but it's not in the budget at all. That's not even in the scope of trying to buy. So they're phenomenal. They do everything fantastic except cold braking. When they're cold, you're, you have to remember you have increased stopping distance. And then once they're hot, they're going to throw you through the windshield. But you may not, you know, also be in a position to uh, put carbon ceramic brakes on. But you do need to upgrade your brakes. Make sure you've got the stopping power to get you slowed down. And even your daily drivers deserve the best brakes you can get for them. So once again, thank you to O'Reilly Auto Parts and the Brake Best Pro line. They've come out with something really awesome uh, that is incredibly affordable and is offering the top shelf quality at reasonable prices. So whether you're putting carbon ceramic brakes on your Nissan GTR or you're just putting the best that you can on your daily driven F-150, don't ignore your brakes. Nothing ruins your day quicker than rear-ending someone because you couldn't stop. One more. Oh! I had to give up on that one. Brakes have joined the chat. Woo. But that's gonna do it. Today we had that very special guest of, you know, the Nissan GTR here in the shop. It was a little bit of fun to work on something that I didn't need. 14 tetanus boosters just to get through. But we're gonna be right back on to the duster. We're gonna be working on Earl because he's got some shows in September as well. It's exciting. We're making lots of progress on all of our projects, having a great time hanging out in the shop. And I appreciate you guys hanging out. You know, it's a whole lot of fun being able to do this stuff and share it all with you from normal projects, you know, like putting carbon ceramic brakes on a GTR or uh, building the most expensive duster ever. <laughs> but I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices, but not with your brakes. Don't, don't do anything dumb with those. Keep those safe. I'm gonna have some fun. Let's leave you with a full throttle rip. Third gear though. We'll see ya.